Summary of the Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulbakov There are two primary locations that are featured in the Master and Margarita, Moscow in the 1930s and Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, during the time of Yeshua's, the Aramaic name for Jesus, execution. The first one starts with two writers, Mikhail Alexandrovich Berlioz and Ivan Homeless Ponyrev, talking about a song that Ponyrev wrote. Berlioz, who is the head of the group of writers called Maslit, says that Ivan's work makes Jesus seem too real. Berlioz tries to explain why Jesus didn't exist, but he is stopped by a strange professor, who turns out to be Woland, or Satan. This stranger says that Jesus was real and that he was there when Pontius Pilate gave his permission for Jesus to be crucified. Even stranger, the strange professor tells Berlioz in a casual way that he will be beheaded that day. The first part of the Pilate story is then told by Woland. Pontius Pilate, the Roman in charge of the city, is shown Yeshua Hanatsri, who is accused of stirring up trouble and wanting to remove the emperor. This happens in Yerushalayim. Pilate is intrigued by how much love Yeshua has for everyone. Deep down, he doesn't want to sentence him to death, but he has to in order to avoid the consequences of letting him go free. Back in Moscow, Wolin's warning comes true when Berlioz loses his head after slipping on sunflower oil and falling under a tram. Ivan tries to catch Woland, Korovev, and the big black cat Behemoth, who are helping him, but he loses them. Through a series of funny mishaps, he ends up at Gribudev's, the building where Maslet lives, and tries to explain what happened to his fellow writers. He ends up in Dr. Stravinsky's mad hospital, though, because of how crazy he acts and how crazy his story is. The next day, Variety Theater director Styopa Likadif wakes up in his Sadovia Street apartment. He is shocked to see a strange man named Woland in his room because he has a bad headache. The man seems to explain what happened the day before. He says that Styopa agreed to put on Woland's black magic show at the theater. As proof, he shows Styopa's signed contract. Woland then presents his group, Koraviv, Azizello, a man with one fong, and Behemoth, a big talking cat. Woland tells Styopa that they are going to move into his apartment. Then, Styopa is quickly taken to Yalta, which is thousands of miles away. The Variety Theater's financial director, Grigory Danilovic Rimsky, and administrator, Ivan Savlievich Veronuka, try to find out why Styopa isn't there and what's going on with the strange Woland's planned show. They don't understand a number of telegrams from Yalta that are said to be from Styopa. Styopa couldn't have traveled such a long way since she was at the theater the day before. Woland sends a beautiful succubus with red hair named Hella to change Veronuka into a vampire. That night, Woland and the rest of his group play at the theater. The people of Moscow are amazed by their show, especially when the poor master of ceremonies, Bengal Sky, loses his head and then gets it back. Korovev makes money pour out of the theater and gives the women of Moscow the latest fashions. At the same time, Ivan meets the master, who is also a patient at Stravinsky's center. The master listens to Ivan's story about Woland and believes it completely. He then tells his own story about how he ended up in the clinic. When they were both married, the master met the love of his life. Her name was Margarita, but he won't say it now. While he was writing his book about Pontius Pilate, they lived together in secret. When all of the reviewers didn't like his work, the master burned the manuscript, left his flat, and went to stay at Stravinsky's clinic. Ivan later dreams about what happens next in the story of Pilate. This part is mostly about Yeshua's death, which his only follower, Matthew Levi, watches from a distance. When an executioner offers Jesus a drink of water while he is hanging on the cross, Jesus tells the man to give it to one of the other men who are also dying. Once the troops have gone, Levi cuts Jesus' body down and takes it with him. The narrator starts book two of the book by promising to show the reader a true, faithful, eternal love. The reader then meets Margarita, the secret wife and true love of the master. She longs for the master and reads what's left of one of his notes after it was burned. Later that day, now Friday, the third day of the Moscow story, Margarita goes to the funeral of Berlioz, whose head is said to have been stolen. She meets Azazello, 
who arranges for her to meet Woland and hints that this might help her find the master, who is still living. At midnight, he gives her a special cream to rub on herself. Margarita turns into a witch when she puts on the cream, and she flies over Moscow to meet Woland and his group. On the way, she burns the official homes of the Maslet Riders, and her housekeeper Natasha follows her. Natasha has also turned into a witch. She rides a hog, which is really Nikolai Ivanovich, Margarita's neighbor who has been changed. When Margarita meets Woland, he asks her to be the server at his full moon spring ball, which he calls Satan's Ball. Here, she has a long line of people who have all done bad things in their past lives. At the end of the ball, when Berlioz's head has been cut off, Margarita and Woland drink the blood from it. Woland talks to the head as he turns it into a cup, sending it into non-being and making fun of Berlioz's foolish atheism in the process. Woland says that he will give Margarita her deepest dream if she helps him. She chooses to help one of the suffering souls she met at the ball instead of doing something for the master. Then Woland gives her another wish, which Margarita uses to call the master, who appears right away. The master is shocked at first, but soon he is very happy to see his love again. Woland talks about his book about Pilate. Behemoth then gives it to the master, and Woland says, manuscripts don't burn. The couple chose to be happy even though they didn't have much money. They stayed in their old apartment. Even the other characters are mostly back to normal, except Natasha, who wants to stay a witch. Margarita reads the master's work in the couple's small room, which brings the pilot story back. In this part, Pilate arranges for Judas to be killed. Judas exposed Yeshua to the officials, which led to his death. Pilate kills Judas outside of the city, after being tricked out of the city. Pilate then talks to Matthew Levi, who was one of Yeshua's followers. Levi wants to kill Judas himself, but he gets mad when he learns that Pilate has already done it. Before he leaves the house, Levi asks for some paper so he can keep writing about Yeshua and what he taught. Now, Saturday has come to Moscow. Investigators try very hard to figure out what's going on with all the strange things happening in the city. They explain most of Wolin's actions as the work of a gang of hypnotists, and they blame ventriloquism for the talking cat Behemoth, with whom they have a battle. Behemoth sets fire to the Sadovia apartment after Woland and his group leave. In the afternoon, he also burns down Gribudev's house. As the two stories start to come together, Levi goes to Woland's house to tell him that Yeshua wants the master to have peace. On Woland's orders, Azazello tricks the couple into drinking poison, which kills their bodies but gives them endless life together in the future. The master and Margarita fly away with Azazello and meet Woland, who is standing on a hill with a view of all of Moscow. Then, they fly away from the city on horses with Woland and the rest of his group, who now show their true forms. For example, Behemoth is actually a slim youth who is the best jester the world has ever seen. As the group quietly flies away from Earth, they soon come across Pontius Pilate, who has been sitting with his dog Bunga and looking at the moon for 2,000 years. Pilate feels terrible about not being able to save Yeshua. Wolin tells the master to set Pilate free, because Pilate is the star of his book. Pilate is set free by the master, who tells him that Jesus is ready for him. Then, Pilate and Bunga walk up a road lit by the moonlight to get to Yeshua. Once his last task is done, the master is given peace, but not enlightenment, and they live together forever in a small, airy house. The main part of the book ends with the same lines that end the master's novel, The Fifth Procurator of Judea, the equestrian Pontius Pilate. In the book's last part, called the epilogue, the narrator gives more information about the random searches into what happened during Wolin's stay. There is nothing left of the strange professor or his group, and a number of cats are killed because people think they are part of the gang. The narrator tells what happens to the smaller characters, like Styopa and Veronuka, after Wolin's acts. All of them go back to some sort of normal life, but they are still haunted by what Wolin did. Ivan becomes a history professor, and even though he agrees with the hypnotism theory as a way to explain his experiences, he is always very nervous and upset when the spring full moon comes around. 
On those nights, his wife gives him a sedative shot to calm him down. Ivan then always dreams about Pilate walking with Jesus and begging Jesus to tell Pilate that Jesus was never put to death. Still in his dream, the master and Margarita come to see Ivan and comfort him. As the moonlight shines on Ivan's face, Margarita tells him that everything will be as it should be. The last lines of the epilogue are the same as the last words of the previous chapter. About the author Mikhail Bulgakov was born to the famous Orthodox philosopher Afanasy Ivanovich Bulgakov and the teacher Vervarat Mykolovna Bulgakov. Bulgakov was raised in a religious family, but he became interested in theater at a young age and did well in school. He was especially drawn to the works of Gogol, Pushkin, and Dostoevsky. Bulgakov also studied medicine at Kiev University. Soon after getting married to his first wife, Tatiana Lapa, he joined the Red Cross and served in World War I. He then fought in the Russian Civil War, where he got typhus. It almost killed him, and he decided to stop being a doctor because of it. In 1919, Bulgakov started writing for the theater. He also wrote short, humorous pieces for newspapers called Feuilletons to improve his skills. In the 1920s, Stalin's censors thought that most of his plays were too controversial and would cause trouble. Stalin did, however, get Bulgakov's work at a small theater in Moscow. He even liked Bulgakov's The White Guard. Around 1924, Bulgakov got married again. By the end of the 1920s, he was depressed because his work wasn't getting good reviews and he was still having trouble with Soviet control. In 1932, he married his third wife, Yelena Shilovskaya. Much of the character Margarita in The Master and Margarita was based on her. In the late 1930s, Boldakov worked at the Bolshoi Theater as a librettist and advisor, but he had the same problems as before. During these years, he worked on his Sunset book, The Master and Margarita, going back and forth between thinking it was good and giving up. He died in 1940. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.